Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Sean and today we got to talk about what is going on in the city of Chicago because the migrant crisis has pushed these people to the point where they're trying to get rid of their sanctuary city status. We've seen different machinations of random Chicagoans being angry, specifically black Chicagoans, at the idea that they're having to deal with the migrant crisis, despite the fact that they were perfectly fine voting for politicians on the national level when it wasn't actually being brought to their doorstep, and voting for politicians on the local level who said that they were going to make things a super sanctuary city in the city of Chicago, like Lori Lightfoot did. But now that the migrants are moving into their neighborhoods, the worm is in fact churning, which makes Greg Abbott's policy of shipping these people to the cities that say that they're welcoming to them a resounding and unbelievable success. We're going to get into that. We're going to talk about it. But before we do, I want to say thank you to everybody signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you give me the money. OK, and thank you to the podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple and Google's podcasting platform. As more buses carrying migrants arrive every day, Chicago's designation as a sanctuary city is waning among likely voters, according to a new poll conducted by M3 Strategies. So I'm sure right now you guys already know the tale. Donald Trump was elected in 2016. He ran in large part on building the wall. He never actually built the wall, but he did, in fact, institute a couple of policies, some of them very sound and very good policies related to immigration, specifically illegal immigration. Now, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, the absolute best policy ever crafted by the Trump administration, by far and away, is the Remain in Mexico policy. This idea that we have asylum seekers that pass through five, six, seven countries on their way to the United States while claiming persecution in their original home country never made any sense because they're not applying for this alleged asylum in any of the countries that are presumably safe. Remember, asylum is different from economic migration. That means I'm in danger, I'm being persecuted, maybe it's the government, maybe it's a rival ethnic group. In some instances, it could be the crime like the cartels or whatever so i need safe haven in your country and this is why these people are entitled to more benefits than your standard ordinary immigrants now during the trump administration and before but it really ramped up in the trump administration migrants would go to border crossings declare that they're seeking asylum and we are getting overloaded by these asylum seekers so it's essentially a strategy to get inside the country have your case adjudicated which takes years so that you will never be sent out. My administration is committed to making sure that we are putting together the full force of government at every single level to ensure that these families who, by the way, they're not illegal. They're asylum seekers. And as you saw right there in the clip, people like Brandon Johnson, other left-wing progressives, declare these people to be legal immigrants because they're applying for asylum, even though it is clear and obvious to me that many of these cases are people committing asylum fraud. Now, we have a crisis in Venezuela. The crisis is due to socialism in Venezuela. Don't let anybody tell you different. And I am actually certain that some of these Venezuelans will actually make good Americans because typically people who come from socialist countries end up doing really well in the United States of America. However, Venezuela, next to Colombia, next to all these other countries, and it doesn't make sense for us to take all the Venezuelans, even though they have countries where they speak the language, they share a similar culture, they don't have the communist or socialist regime to be more accurate that they have in Venezuela, and they would slot right into those societies. I'm fine with being compassionate and taking some people who are legitimate cases of asylum, who want to be Americans and all that, but the fact is, the asylum system was never intended for you to be the first choice, and clearly and obviously, allowing asylum seekers to break the entire purpose of asylum is having very detrimental effects on this country, and by the way, to be clear, they were having more detrimental effects for a longer period of time on border states like Arizona, like Texas, etc., because they were on the front lines of dealing with what is immigration, a federal issue. So, that's where we are today. However, residents of Chicago don't like what they voted for. They don't like the taste of their own medicine. They liked the virtue signaling under the Lori Lightfoot administration, but now that that virtue signaling has come due, 
all of a sudden, aldermen's in the city of Chicago want to put it up for a vote on whether or not they're going to get rid of sanctuary city status. A majority of Chicagoans prefer to end sanctuary city versus keep it. Pollster Matt Podorsky says 46% of those polled said no more sanctuary city, 39% said Chicago should remain one, and 14% were unsure. And this is reflected in the polling that you just heard. Now, I will say that the uh, guy that they talked to said the majority of Chicagoans want to end sanctuary city status. Just a quick correction. That is clearly and obviously a plurality. It's the the most answered of the three options, but obviously we're not at a majority point yet, but this would be enough on a ballot initiative, presumably to overturn that status. Chicago residents were polled all over the city. It was 600 plus likely voters. The method was SMS to web, so all text message and web-based surveys, uh, and we polled only folks who voted in the most recent municipal election. Now, even though they were wrong about saying it was an absolute majority that were in favor of getting rid of this, I think it's crucial that they only polled people who vote in municipal elections, which typically have lower rates of turnout. And this is one of the reasons why, by the way, that the Chicago mayoral election is an off-year election, so that you could have as few voters voting as possible. That way you can have blocks, unions, and whatnot voting in that election, so somebody like Brandon Johnson can take power with only the support or majority of his support coming from the people in the Chicago machine, because this is how machine politics work. You often see this, by the way, with school board elections or other types of elections that you don't really think about that have much more power than you can imagine. So, of course, it makes sense to poll these people in particular because they're the most likely to be voting on this issue. Now, what's even more crucial or even more important is who voted for this because it cuts to the heart of Brandon Johnson's base, who, to his credit, I guess, or to his detriment, has been viciously defending the sanctuary city status, pledging that migrants matter more than regular citizens in the city of Chicago, and that, of course, is Brandon Johnson. So his base is largely black support. And by the way, I know he won very narrowly over the tough on crime guy, but the reason why he won is because he got the most crime ridden, the most black areas of Chicago to support him overwhelmingly. And this is good because now we can look at what those voters think about his policies. The poll was broken down along racial lines. White voters actually preferred to keep Sanctuary City by about a 10 point majority, uh, whereas minority voters over overwhelmingly wanted to end Sanctuary City as it stands today. So isn't that interesting? Isn't that amazing to look at right there in plain sight? Of the likely voters that they put forward, the only group that seems to be in favor of keeping Sanctuary City status appears to be white voters. Now, it's 49% to 38%, so again, it's not a majority, but it is a significant plurality. But considering we're told time and time again that enforcement of the border is evil white racism, and we had the codification or the recodification and extension of the Sanctuary City law signed by Lori Lightfoot in order to be something that they could use against the evil orange man because he was an evil white racist, it's quite amazing to me to look at this only to discover that white people are the only ones that are supporting this. And this makes a lot of sense because Chicago has some of the safest areas in all the country and some of the most dangerous areas of all the country. And the migrants are disproportionately being shipped to the black and Hispanic areas. And by the way, the Hispanic number, 48% in favor of getting rid of it, should dispel the myths about it being all about anti-Hispanic discrimination. And the black numbers, 51%. This is the heart of Brandon Johnson's base. And remember, these are people who voted in municipal elections, an absolute majority in favor of getting rid of it. And then you have an absolute majority for all other minority groups, which should make it clear to you guys out there in the public that sanctuary cities are in in fact, not the policy of fighting against evil white racism, but in fact, the policies of white guilt, the policies of being too much of a coward in order to stand up for your own country, in order to stand against open borders, and that's what we see reflected right there, which is interesting because, again, as I said, the people who voted for Brandon Johnson are 
are very much disproportionately in the black category. So they voted for him, but this was due in large part to Brandon Johnson running a campaign that basically said that the other guy was racist and everybody who was supporting him was racist. So it was more on tribal lines in that regard. However, when push comes to shove, when people are confronted with their own policies, the first people to shift to build the wall happen to be minorities over the wealthier white people of Chicago, your elite of Chicago. And by the way, we see this all the time. The people who support defunding the police tend to also be wealthier. They tend to also be wider. And this is due in large part to the fact that they don't live in the neighborhoods that are ravaged by crime. They live in some of the safer areas where the police aren't really there in the first place because there's not a lot of crime. So they don't see the police as necessary because they don't interact with them on their day-to-day -day lives. I remember there was a poll very early on that said that the biggest predictor of whether or not somebody would support defunding the police is whether they make over $100,000. That was the only group that had a majority in favor of this policy. Policy. And as we've seen through multiple instances of polling, black voters overwhelmingly want to keep police funding the same or increase police funding because they have to deal with the crime ridden areas. This is largely what people describe as luxury beliefs, where people adopt beliefs for status because they don't have to pay the consequences for that. Now, of course, defund the police also has young people championing the policy. Young people often support incredibly stupid things in their youth when they're the most idealistic, when they're in college learning about how the police are evil white racism and they enforce capitalism and like that's a bad thing. But yeah, that's really where we are in terms of that policy. And obviously there are notable people who are race hustlers who happen to be minorities that make large sums of cash also backing that policy. But what we're seeing right here is is the very same thing. People are outraged, and as you can see, it doesn't fall along what the mainstream media would tell you the lines of this policy support and people against it should fall on. The poll included 18 questions on why likely voters wanted the sanctuary city status to end or remain. Pajorski says minority voters were very concerned about resources to support the migrant crisis being drained from their communities. That's basically what I just told you. The people who are in favor of ending sanctuary cities are the ones who are afraid of the consequences of those policies. Wealthier white people in Chicago are less reliant on government assistance, so they're less worried about the drain on public resources because the impact against them is not going to be as strong as it is for black Chicagoans, as it is for Hispanic Chicagoans, or as it is for the people who fit in that nebulous other category. Exactly what I just expressed to you is reflected in this poll. The poll results should bolster a move by two aldermen who recently introduced a resolution to place a referendum on the March ballot to ask voters if Chicago should remain a sanctuary city. Now they're trying to set up a ballot initiative for this policy and honestly in general not a big fan of the ballot initiatives. The idea that we just punt every difficult question down to the voters or on the federal level up to the Supreme Court never makes any sense to me. If you're advocating for a policy and your representative, then introduce the policy. Represent your people. This idea that we should just avoid the people who are in charge of governing, governing to me is absolutely absurd and ridiculous. And remember, these sanctuary city policies where you never cooperate with federal authorities are also absurd and ridiculous. So let me know what you guys think is going to be the result of this. Are Chicagoans going to get their way? Are they going Going to get rid of sanctuary city status? Are they finally going to start turning over illegal immigrant criminals to federal authorities? Or do you think that this is just a blip on the radar? And when push comes to shove, all the lobbying groups and all those people will sway them in the other direction. Let me know. And as usual, if you like this video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social medias, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the sanctuary cities going down in flames in Chicago. Chicago till next time.